Shalom, shalom. This is your brother Shamak. I have the great millstone, Atlanta Kemp. Before I get started, I want to give all the glory. Infinite praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Racha Kodash. Yahweh being the Heavenly Father's true name, and it's only begotten Son's true name being Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew tongue. All right, and I also want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone who teach and rule well, and who are the true leaders of the Israelites in these last days. I also want to give a shalom to the sincere brothers that push the teachings of truth worldwide, and shalom to the sincere listeners and you sincere believers. All right, here with this article. Going basically into <clears throat> the world is truly investing or making investments for World War Three. Okay, this article here from New York Times. It reads: Biden signs seven hundred and seventy billion defense bill. The National Defense Authorization Act passed Congress with bipartisan support over the opposition of liberals pushing for more social spending. And but check this out: it says, and this article is up. This is recent from December twenty seventh, twenty twenty one. All right. This is this are this is our these are investments for World War Three. That is Bible prophecy. Okay, it's inevitable for to happen. It's guaranteed to take place. All right. It says the bill that President Biden signed on Monday increased spending in almost every part of the military. All right. So hey, preparing for war, <laughs> prepare preparation for war. Okay. President Biden signed a nearly seven hundred seventy billion defense bill on Monday, twenty four billion more. Then he had requested a setback for anti-war liberals whose efforts to expand social spending had been blocked by Democratic moderate, moderates in the name of fiscal responsibility. It says lawmakers increased spending in almost every part of the military, inc including new funding to counter China's military expansion, initiatives to bolster the defense of Ukraine, and billions in cash for the procurement of advanced aircraft, ship, and high-tech hardware. All right. So they're basically trying to prepare in every aspect of the military, okay? They understand, well, hey, this war, World War Three, is guaranteed to take, take place. And this and this article shows you that the Bible is facts. The Bible is true, okay? I don't think I ever had to read any more on it. Let's grab Joel chapter 3, verse 9, okay? It reads, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. And how are they? They're waking up, man. They're making those investments into their military. Verse 10 says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Okay. And to that plowshare and that pruning hook, these are gardening tools, man. Let's get that pruning hook, plowshare real quick. These are gardening tools. But what did the prophecy say? It says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Cause they're making that investment not into you know this building or this this infrastructure. No, they're 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 investing that into their military. They're investing that into their missiles. All right, they're investing that into their their high tech hardware and those aircraft, man. Okay, their bombs. <laughs> all right, it says verse eleven. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, all you other nations, man. It says gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened. And come to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is in the Hebrew, Yahweh Shapat. The Lord is about to gather all these nations in the Middle East, in that landmass. All right. It said, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Okay. And this is going to start that World War Three. Okay. And for those that are not aware of World War Three being in the Bible, plain, plain as day. Let me get Revelation chapter 9 verse. It's like it. Revelation chapter 9 verse 12. It reads. One woe is past. Woe meaning a mass destruction, a major destruction. Come on, it's not rocket science, okay? It says one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes hereafter, okay? <laughs> so that in, the, in the Revelation chapter nine goes into World War One in that prophecy, because that was prophecy as well. That has that has come to pass, all right? But World War Three is has yet come to pass, but it's coming, and it's about to happen. Let's get that Revelation chapter eleven, okay? Revelation chapter eleven verse fourteen. The second war was passed. Hey, so World War Three, World War Two, World War One, World War Two, and World War Three all prophesied. World War One and World War Two already took place, weighing upon that third, that third war. All right, that that World War Three. It says the war, the second war was passed, and behold, the third war coming quickly. All right, what else could that be? Come on, it's not right. Hey, the Lord made it simple to those that are, that are seeking, you know, that are seeking the knowledge. Man, He made it simple. All right. He's going to have it happen through thermonuclear missile destruction. Simple. <laughs> All right. But, hey, 
you know, common sense ain't so common, you know. But second Ezra chapter 16, verse 13. And it reads, For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. And it's going to thermonuclear missiles. And it says they shall not miss. Because why? The Lord is going to have these nations shoot those missiles and they're going to hit the targets because the Lord's want because the Lord wanted it to happen. All right? That's why. It's with the spirit going to be on those missiles. All right? It says to shot to the ends of the world. So these are not just, you know, you you drawing back with your, your bow and arrow. No, these are going to that those, those thermonuclear missiles. All right, what can be shot? It says this going back into uh, what? ICBM uh, missiles. Intercontinental ballistic. Yeah, intercontinental ballistic missiles. All right, intercontinental. All right, from one continent to another. For, for Verse 14, it says, Behold, the plagues are sent. Plagues going into evils. It says the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumes the foundation of the earth. And one aspect in that ultimate plague with the thermonuclear missiles. All right. All right. All right. The, hey, the fire the fire is kindled. They're they're prepared. They spent the money. They they built them. All right. They tested them. And then now is now it's just straight game time and action. OK, and Lord willing, we be able to escape from this thermonuclear destruction, which is possible with the Lord. Because what? Hey, why those missiles are shot? Getting beamed up on a chariot in the mist. All right. You know, since I said that, let me let me finish this off and I'm going to grab uh, Isaiah 26, verse 20. Let me grab verse 16. It says, like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. All right. And there's one aspect going to those thermonuclear missiles. Once they're shot, hey, the Lord's going to have them fulfill what they're supposed to fulfill. He's going to have that hit, whoever is meant to hit in that landmass. All right. In America, according to Bible prophecy, is going to get destroyed and will never be inhabited ever again. Because hey, um, concerning Isaiah chapter 13, this landmass is not about to be inhabited ever again. Well, let me grab the Isaiah 26 for those that sincerely, sincerely believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. This is what we hope in. This is Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. Come, my people. All right. This word is only for the Israelites, only for only for those that sincerely believe in within and, in, and that can sincerely believe in the entirety of the doctrine, the body of teachings. All right. The correct teachings. It says, come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, go into those chariots. It says, and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. All right, and that main that end of the nation, that wrath from the Lord, that righteous anger is going to be kindled through World War Three. That's how it's going to take place, okay? And we and, and Lord, when we be able to witness that end of the nation overpass happening right before our eyes, okay? While we in the chariot, then we're going to come back down on Earth and have dominion and rulership over the other nations, okay? Let me grab that with Isaiah chapter two. This is Isaiah chapter two, verse two, and it reads, "And it shall come to pass in the last days." All right, we're in it. We're in those times, man. Yahweh Shai hasn't came back yet. We're in those last days right now. It says that the mount, the like that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, in the top of the governments. We're going to be above all these other nations. It says it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. All right, the nurse, the nations, these nations are going to serve the Israelites. Simple as that. They're going to serve it. They're going to serve the Israelites, man. Okay. While we're under and subjecting to Yahweh by Shemiah Shai and King David. All right. Verse three. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob. They're going to say this. They're, these nations are about to get humble. It's easy for them to come across to our videos now. Talk shit. Oh, just say, just roll the eyes and ignore it. It's easy to do that right now. But when those missiles are shot and you burning and being tortured to death by fire, that's a whole different story. That's a whole different story, man. Those that hear this message. Hey. Take heed and repent. All right. And if of course you're a heathen in another nation, hey, you just you just you just hearing that you just hearing your uh, your warning, your destruction. That's all. It said into the house of, of the power of Jacob, the Israelites. Jacob is the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion, which is to Zion in Hebrew, I was going to memorial, okay, shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay, verse four. Because right, this is about to be a kingdom and a rulership of righteousness. It's going to be 100% aligned with the Bible. Okay? Verse 4. 
But it's going to be written within our inward parts. It's going to naturally come to us, man. Verse 4 it says, And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. But in Joel 3, we mentioned these in this, in this wartime among, uh, concerning this heathen, they're preparing for war. But it's about the road's about to be reversed. Without rulership, there will be no more war. All right, it says, and they shall beat their swords to plowshares and their spears to pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Okay? So, hey, World War, ain't no World War Four in the Bible, man. This is this World War Three. This is the war to end off wars. This is, about to, this is about to be very dramatic. Okay? And Lord, will we be able to escape from it through our faith, man? Through our faith with our works. Okay? Us being sincere, sincere Hebrew Israelites. Okay, it says neither shall they learn war anymore. So it's not going to be any more war in the kingdom of heaven. All right, no, there ain't no more war. And if and that's a cut, that's a great cut to those people in our land, in the land of Israel right now, pretending to be us. Because if this was the kingdom, if you were the people of the Lord, there won't be war taking place on the earth. So that's a cut to your ideology. That's a cut to your whole your fake identity, man. All right, pretending to be us, man, pretending to be the true Israelites. Okay. So I want to lastly grab 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Yeah, 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. And reads, and he answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before. All right, so the Lord already told us. This was just what the first scripture I brought out with Joel chapter 3 verse 10 with these nations investing in, in that military, investing basically in war, in their defense, in all aspects of their military, as America is doing. These other nations are doing it as well. That's just an article primarily pertaining to America. That's all. All right. But he already told us, he already, the scripture said they're going to be turning their plowshares and pruning hooks into spears and swords. They're not gonna be focusing on damn ag agriculture and the food and the, how the people feel. No, nah, they were they he worried about what's about the this defense, these missiles, and destruction and war. All right. The the Bible already foretold us. That's why we've been uh of course through the spirit of Yahweh by Shmiyal Shah, thankfully, we've been able to take heed to that, have faith in it and believe in it and, and, and say it before it happens. Which we're doing now. Verse two, it says, Then shall thou well shalaki. Like then shalt thou understand that is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So when seeing this article, it's like, oh, then, oh, yeah, Yahweh Shah is on the way. We're at the end. Yahweh Shah is on the way. We are at the end. All right. With Joe Biden investing over 700 billion into, into the military. All right. We are at the end, man. So we're just we're just waiting patiently upon the Lord as we're commanded to do and waiting for these prophecies to be fulfilled. All right. So, hey, so the hey, so the Bible can be. Or the Lord can be shown to be true, the one true power in in the earth. All right, so that that course that uh, yeah, I'll end off with that. So uh, Lord willing, another lesson was edifying and also encouraging to you, sincere believers and you, sincere listeners. I will end off by giving all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, or Hakwadash. All right, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. A hey, shalom, keep the faith. Shalom.